All right, I'm actually going to start by asking a question, which I'm hoping that somebody will give me, or several somebody's will give me some feedback on. What was that? An airplane. Prop driven plane, anything else? <laughs> More information, good. Any other points of view? Yeah, reading the file names. Um, there's a whole bunch of different pieces of information that we've, we can get out of that. It was a sound. It was an aeroplane. It was the sound of an aeroplane. It was the sound of a specific aeroplane. In this particular case, it was a 1944 Supermarine Spitfire Mark 16, yada, yada. There is actually quite a lot of importance placed on exactly how we define what that is. And this is actually one of the first things I want to talk about before we even get into cramming lots of sounds into your devices, actually understanding what the sounds are that you're putting in, why you're putting them in there, what you expect of them, and how, most importantly, they are going to be perceived. Now, I did a talk a couple of months ago where I started the talk with this exact same sound. And I, I asked that question, what, what did we just hear? And everybody here got things pretty much right. It's the sound of an aeroplane. It's the sound of a propeller-driven aeroplane. It's the sound of this particular model of aeroplane. But hang on, for what we're doing, our purposes here is we're discussing the whole idea of getting these sounds and using them in a game situation. So, is that, that that's, that's from our point of view of, oh, I've got this sound of an aeroplane that I'm putting into a game because I need the sound of an aeroplane in the game. But is that how it's going to be perceived in the game? When somebody plays your game, regardless of what platform it is, how big your, your memory budget is, how, how fantastic your game is or not, if during the game, they hear that sound and they go, oh, that's the sound of an aeroplane, then possibly something's not quite working. Because in the game, they shouldn't be sitting there analysing what it is that's going on. And I'll give you some examples. If, for instance, your game, again, regardless of what platform, if your game is a game that's simulating you being a British or an American bomber pilot and you've got to fly missions over Europe and you've got to try and drop bombs to win the war, this is the sound of a British Spitfire. So for you in this game, this is quite possibly the sound of protection. Or if you've just been chased by German fighter planes and your bomber has been shot up and you're almost about to crash if, any, if you get hit by one more bullet, this is the sound of salvation. If we, return, if we flip it over the other side and the game happens to be that you're actually a German and you're basically on the ground and you're defending the, the French coast from the D-Day landings, this single sound takes on a whole completely different meaning. This is now the, a sound of something that you should fear because this sound is not just, oh, look, I can hear an aeroplane. And in fact, if you speak to any of the people who have been involved in any kind of combat situations, they can start to recognise sounds purely from a survival point of view. And in fact, this is how we use sound. If the fire alarms go off in this building, we don't sit there and go, oh, it's a fire sound and it's, a, it's, a, it's you know, 700 hertz and it's cycling. Oh, hang on, the building's on fire. We react before we think. And in fact, in a lot of cases, we react to sounds um, on an instinctual level because that is actually how we survive. In this day and age, if you're driving your car, you hear a car horn. You, you, even if you've heard car horns thousands of times, you will react to it. This is exactly what you need to have happen. And in the same way that if you're walking down the street and you hear behind you the sound of a predatorial cat, a large predatorial cat, obviously not through a speaker or through somebody's ringtone or whatever, but I'm talking the actual sound that's right behind you and that's actually being projected by something big enough to be a predatorial cat, you will react to it whether you like it or not. Now, how you will react to it depends on you. That reaction may be just to freeze in panic. It might be just to run away screaming. But my point is, is that most creatures on this planet use sound in various different ways and in a lot of cases it's for survival. All right, so this is one of the first things we need to think about before we start even thinking about cramming our sounds in. What are we using our sounds for? Why are we putting our sounds in? And I think in as much as the, the previous one was talking about, you know, oh, analysing your, your particular market and analysing what sort of things you want to get out of your game and analysing whether you want to have bright colours or dark and, and shades of grey, it's the same sort of thing about sound. 
Now, one of the, the things that I'll, I will say as a bit of a criticism is that quite often sound, and this is not in the games, just in the games industry, this is in media, this is in film and in television, people seem to have this sort of thought that, well, we've got to have some sound. Uh, let's, let's go get some, somebody to do some sounds. And it's sort of as kind of uh, a consequence of, well, we're making a game, we'd better put some sounds in because somebody will have an expectation of it. Now, there's a couple of problems, obviously, with that thought, but there's it can lead further into even your design things. Think about it from this point of view. If you're actually trying to make a game, let's say we go back to the original idea of the, you know, you're a bomber pilot, etc., etc., and this is on a small, like an iPhone, and you don't have a lot of resources to play with. You're sitting there going, well, we, we wanted to have this bit where, you know, the, the, you, you know when you're getting towards the end of the mission because, you know, the, the Spitfires will come along and save you, which means you're, you're now clear to fly the rest of the mission. Why build the assets? Why build 3D models of Spitfires? Why put the textures on those 3D models? Why try and actually sort out the animations for them and the AI for them and everything else like that? Why not just have a single sound file play? And in fact, I've worked on projects where we did this. We did a, a, a years ago when I was at Blue Tongue, we did a, a, a demo for a game concept to try and get funding from a publisher. And um, the whole scene was sort of in a, a city block area. And then at the last minute, somebody went, oh, but hang on, the movie we did of this had like police helicopters everywhere. Uh, and somebody's like, well, make police helicopters. I'm like, we can't. We have zero memory left. We had pushed the PS2 as far as we possibly could. There was no memory anywhere, except within the sound. So I added the sound of a helicopter flying overhead. Could you see it? No. Did it matter? No. Because the point was is that you, city streets, buildings everywhere, I mean, if you walk outside now and you hear the sound of a helicopter and you don't instantly see the helicopter, you don't start questioning whether the helicopter exists or not. You don't start, start thinking, hmm, well, I can't see it, therefore it doesn't exist. Therefore, this is an elaborate hoax put on by the city of Melbourne. They've gone to thousands of dollars expense of setting up speakers all around Melbourne to simulate that there's a helicopter there just for my benefit. Um, uh, you, uh, see where I'm going with this? You hear a helicopter, you assume there's a helicopter there. Well, where is it? Oh, it's behind a building. Cities, streets, um, without going into the, the physics of sound, sound bounces off things all over the place. Could be behind that building, it could be down the road. Sound travels in bizarre ways. So if we put in the sound of a helicopter, everybody goes, there's a helicopter around here. If it's a game where I'm a criminal, maybe it's a police helicopter. Same idea of having a police siren. If I, if I have a game where you're, you know, again, GTA, uh, for example, you're walking down one of the city streets, you hear the sound of a police siren, you're like, ooh dear. Now, in GTA, you will probably have the follow-up of the police car turning up, but even if you didn't, if the siren got louder and louder, you could potentially start deciding, I'm going to run away. Maybe they never even built the police car. So, what I'm suggesting to you is that rather than having the attitude of going into something thinking, Ah, uh, look, I better have sound. You know, I've got some things here that you can see. It'll be silly if, they, if they're doing things or exploding and there's no sound to them. I would actually argue that the sound is something that you should be thinking of as part of your design. And especially from the point of view of if you're trying to actually be very, very careful with your resources, um, I would argue that I could probably give you the effect of something existing in your game environment for a lot less memory and CPU and other resources than you having to build 3D models and texturing them and, and doing the AI for them, etc. So that's the first thing that I want to sort of just give you to think about. That sound is not just a consequence of things happening. Sound can actually be an incredibly useful tool for you and in some cases can remove the need for visual effects. Again, if I get you to all close your eyes, and we've played enough games here, but if I got you to all close your eyes, and then I sort of pulled out from behind the counter a real shotgun and did this, at least some of you would go, hang on, I've been listening to the sound of the aeroplane he played, which came through these speakers up here, and I can listen to his voice talking, which is coming through those speakers up there and maybe a little bit here, but I would argue you can hear me through the speakers located up there more loudly than you can hear my own voice. Some of you who have decent sort of oral sort of positioning would probably go, okay, I just heard a shotgun go ka and it didn't come through the speakers. It was located on stage and it was a little bit softer. That sounds like he's got a real shotgun and I'm sitting here with my eyes closed. 
Oh dear, he's lured us all in here as payback for all those times that the sound guys have been treated badly.